Oh, shit. Well, hello there, guys. Oh, I'm being unprofessional here. Welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Stoic, the Ke or Kevin, Stoic Reseller. I'm all fumbling around today. I don't know what's going on. But you can see I'm in my garage. Pardon the mess. Today's going to be an interesting topic. Something that I think we all need to be reminded of. And that is basically to reflect on how kind of resilient and awesome we, as eBay resellers, or maybe you resell on other platforms, well, how truly awesome we can be and how awesome we've been. So um, I want to start off with explaining why I started my eBay journey, my business, my store. Um, and it's important. I, I think... Um, you know, I reflect quite a bit about why I do this because it's not easy. And I think as time progresses, we've noticed it's, it is a lot harder and harder and becomes a little bit more frustrating day to day, supposedly. So my why initially was um, my wife and I went to college and, you know, I didn't graduate because I dropped out. Didn't just kind of lost interest in my field, but she graduated but we accumulated a lot of student loan debt and um, I didn't want my family to suffer the burden of student loans. And so I started the business knowing that at some point we were going to have to repay. And uh, that's, that's the primary reason it has now uh, progressed. We, we are paying on student loans. Now the business pays for that. Um, it pays for my car loan um, as well as a few emergencies that come across. I mean, I think it's important to understand that, you know, most Americans don't have even a thousand dollars to cover an emergency. And so eBay, specifically from, to my family, actually provides a level of financial freedom that I think a lot of people don't necessarily have in life. And that's kind of important when you really think about it, guys, because I work really hard at this. I'm part-time. I have a full-time job as well. Um, and I try to minimize the impact that eBay has on my family too. I like to spend time with them. I like to have fun and go do things with them, um, but also maintain this business and what it takes to be successful on the platform. So, um, I mean, that's, that's my why. And so guys, I want you all to please remind yourselves, think back. What got you into this? Was it just simply you saw some crazy dude on, on YouTube talking about get rich quick and flashing all his fancy Lamborghinis and his golden you know toilet with the, the water that squirts up to wash your butt? I mean, things like that. Did, did that get you into it? Or did you actually have a financial reason? You know, um, so, so in today's day, we need to remind ourselves, okay? Also... Um, you know, going forward, I, I really do want everyone to realize why I started this channel. Um, it, it, you know, I have, I have definite people to thank for at least getting to, me to the notoriety that I have now. It's not much, but it's certainly more than I ever thought I'd ever get. Okay. I'm internally grateful. Um, you know, I, I'll try to learn how to link these people in the comment section or, uh, somewhere. I have to, I have to learn that. I do have to give people their 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 desserts, and that's something that I'll have to grow and learn how to do. Um, but the reason I started the channel initially was um, earlier this year I saw a lot of growth in channels that were pretty negative, um, so, and, and albeit it should have been negative. I mean, eBay has been for at least the last seven. Let's just say for all of 2023 has been a struggle for 90% of us. And, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, I was still having more success at eBay than I had ever had. And so I wanted to start a platform of solutions, a platform of education, a platform that we can all kind of group together. I can find like-minded and people who have different opinions and we can all be one and come to a, an understanding of each other for one and two build ourselves as resellers build ourselves as a community to understand how things are working and so 
as I struggled with that, I mean, I, I kind of just resorted to really doing what sold. I mean, as a clothing reseller, it, there's so many brands, so many styles that it was helpful, at least when I started, to see what was actually selling. Um, also, the second reason I started the channel was I really wanted to grow the stoic philosophy. Um, I have lost sight of that, um, I would say, more recently. Uh, I used to start every video with a stoic quote. Um, but that got a little um, too much, I think. I think, for me, I just didn't have the time to incorporate that. Um, but I still try every single day to live a certain value. You know, I, I think, you know... One of the stoic things that I remind myself every single day is people suck. I mean, it's, it's articulated a little bit better than that. But essentially, you know, the stoics have a saying that, what do you expect? Why are you getting frustrated with how people can and will be? It's almost, you know, it's like Newton's, not Newton's law. It's, it's what law is that where everything that can happen will happen, you know? But yeah, guys, um, so... I just want, again, to liken back to what I was trying to say, we're awesome. And the one, the next things I want you guys to realize is how much we've had to overcome uh, as resellers. You know, I've, I've killed my store. I've almost killed it, actually, I should say twice. Um, but I had the perseverance and the drive to overcome and be successful. Um, it, was, it certainly hasn't been easy. You know, I... When I first started, day one, I was uh, being being scammed. I mean, everyone had to go through that at some point, if you're a newer reseller, where you have some dude going, hey, I want to buy this item, but can you message me on, I don't know, Facebook Messenger? Hey, uh, can you go and message me on this unknown Chinese app that I have no idea, um, and it's going to install a freaking thing in your phone, and then all of a sudden... You got Xi Jinping in your phone. I mean, like, I don't... Anyways, <laughs> I digress, guys. Um, <clears throat> and it's taken a lot of hard work, you know. And over the course of... Uh, I started in 2020, uh, June of 2020 to be specifically. So um, I'm moving on to three and a half years at this point. And um, there's a lot of lessons that I've learned. You know, I, I think back to some of the first pictures I took, which was a a piece of clothing on the back of my door hanging on by a hanger with a lamp tilted on its side as a lighting source as I try to take a picture without making a shadow. The pictures were terrible. The listing was terrible. The fact that I sold anything in those days is nothing short of, like... I just You think back and you're just like, dang, I was terrible. But that's that's the journey, guys. And that's what we all have to remind ourselves. Is the journey from where we were until we are now. And hopefully everyone can look at each other and go, or at themselves rather, and go, man, I have made a, a lot of success. I've made a lot of different decisions and I'm where I am now because of what I've done, or rather what you've done. And we should all be proud of that, okay? The issues we're all facing aren't necessarily our faults, but we can strive to fight back there's you have to right that's what we that's what we do every single day is fight back against high prices additional shipping costs more selling fees you know uh, the struggle to get views the struggle to get sales that's all we've ever constantly done that is the mantra of being a reseller right it is part of the hustle and i think we all need to remind ourselves that before we start you know, pointing out certain things that are going wrong or some things that aren't right in the system, we have to realize that it's probably always been there. And it's taken to this point that we're all noticing it because it's all coming into one black hole and we're just killing each other over it. And it's it's kind of wild, you know? You know, it's, it's... I don't know. But I thought I'd share that with you guys. So... Um, as I look down at my notes, I'm hella unprofessional, okay? Um, you know, I try my best, but I I got so much so much to think about, so many things going on. I have to write this stuff down sometimes. Um, so, you know, I, like I said, the, the first thing that we need to remind... First thing we need to remind ourselves of is how awesome we are. And the why. 
the why did you start this, guys? Um, you know, do you have children? Things like that. Why did you start it? And how has that progressed over time? The second thing you need to remind yourselves is your willingness to succeed and overcome your struggles. And, well, the struggles I face as well. And the fact that we've done that. And we're at the point now where we can have this conversation with other like-minded or even different-minded people and try to create solutions. Before I get to the third and final thing we should remind ourselves as resellers, I want to share with you uh, the two ways I almost killed my business. The first way was um, I initially started out going to Goodwills and, and Salvation Armies and things like that which is also what I, I still do that. That's actually my main way of sourcing. The one first way I stopped is I, I started watching channels about how people are going to Ross and Burlington and TJ Maxx and Marshalls and, you know, buying all this stuff and it's selling hella fast online. And, you know, it, I really bought into that, guys. I had a lot, you know, I used to live in California, so I had a lot of those stores around me. But... I always had a job, so I never could get to those stores at a preferential time. But because of how these videos and the small successes I was having, I wasn't really paying that close attention to what was actually happening. So if you ever go to these stores, I mean, you're not paying under $20 for, for most things. Okay, so mind you, the average cost of goods is significantly higher than if you go to a thrift store. And so this form of retail arbitrage, I was spending all of this money that I had made going to thrift stores, doing this, doing that, and putting it into slower selling items at a higher cost that maybe I was making 40 to 50% ROI on, you know, especially when it came to shoes. I mean, I there was one time where I literally bankrupted myself, it seemed like. I had bought six pairs of the same shoe because I was trying to trust comps and I ended up sitting on those shoes for three months when my goal was to sell those within a few weeks. And all th all six pairs of those shoes cost me up, it was like $400. And mind you, I'd only been six months into this reselling gig and $400 at that time, I literally had to skip sourcing. I, there was a point in time where I didn't source at all. And I needed money and I didn't have it. Um, and part of the growth was understanding that you ha you can't do that. You cannot cripple yourself that bad. There was a point in time where I didn't have enough money in the, in the business bank account to even do my shipping. And that, that was the point, the aha, that I really need to start focusing on numbers. Um, but with all good lessons, sometimes you just don't learn them well enough. And that leads me into the second, like, way I basically almost killed my business. And, um, so I don't know if people remember, but in 2020, tail end of 2020 into 2021, uh, the sports cards and, uh, trading card market was literally on fire. I mean, you, you think of the most crazy forest fire you ever have ever seen. And you think about how quickly a market grew. It was to the point where you still see eBay trying to kindle that market with, you know, they have the vault, they have um, verification, like it make sure it's authentic and stuff like that. You know, they, they went out of their way to talk to USPS and create a specific shipping for it. It was just crazy how fast that market changed the landscape of reselling. And, um, you know, I kind of want to show you, you know, I have two tubs here. I don't know if you can see them. I'm going to kind of move the camera. But this is the remnants of it. Um, I mean, I still have quite a bit of this. I mean, you can see I got Pokemon. Um, let's see what else is in here. I got Magic the Gathering. Um, I have some sports in here. You know, and... There's probably, I mean, there's probably easily a couple thousand dollars worth of product here at cost. And some of this I've lost money on, I guarantee it, because um, I can only sell it at cost. Some of it's gone up, um, and I've just been kind of 
holding on to it. I mean, I'm not that desperate for the funds right now, but I mean, in a pinch, I could probably sell this stuff and make back some money. Um, but certainly that was an interesting market, guys. I wasn't very well capitalized and I don't know if you guys remember the days, man, you run over to Target real quick and get in line with the other 50 people and try to scrape away one blaster that you could sell for 60 bucks, pay 20 and get 60. I mean, it was, the money was there. People were buying that stuff like hotcakes, guys. And, but the problem is, is I didn't have the connections. I didn't have the resources and I didn't have the capital. And people, I think that people fall into this trap a lot where they don't understand how much their business can actually handle, how, like how hard it is to be actually capitalized and be able to go into different business ventures without crumbling the foundation that puts you there. So those are the, you know, I hope no one's had to go through those because they are incredibly stressful. But people who have gone through that understand that there's... A level of, how do you say it? There's, there's it's a level of accomplishment, knowing that you learned a hard lesson, you got kicked in the gut, you stood back up, and you continue to chug on. And that leads me to our last and final thing that we need to remind ourselves. So as a recap, Remind yourselves of your of the why. So, be, and and I'm let me if you're still listening to this, the reason this video is being pushed out, or I'm publishing this, is because there's so many people quitting this game right now, quitting this reselling and just going to get a regular job, and it kind of kills me. It pains me to know that there are people giving up on their ambitions so easily, their dreams maybe. I mean. It's kind of wild. And I just really want people to remind themselves of the things that are important. So remind yourselves of the why did you start this in the first place. And it could be anything. It could be any reason. And then if it's not relevant, what? why are you still doing it? Try to figure out the why are you continuously doing this. The second is to basically remind yourselves of your willingness and your fortitude to succeed we all have it otherwise we wouldn't be here you wouldn't have what you currently have if you weren't able to overcome the struggles that we face every single day and the last one is to just take pride in your accomplishments guys we've all accomplished great things in this business and whether it be success in the business or maybe you hit one of those whys maybe you hit a goal in your reselling aspirations and man that just it just felt good maybe you maybe you're just doing this to pay your car off and you paid that sucker off and now you don't have that bill and you basically did it all because you put a little bit of sweat equity into things man it, you know you got to remind yourselves of the big accomplishments you cannot lose sight of the fact that at some point, you are worse off than you are now. And we all need that. We all need to keep reminding ourselves. We need to fulfill a certain need in ourselves. And that's only fulfilled by reminding ourselves of everything that got us to where we are right now, guys. And we can remind ourselves of all that, but we need to stay true to the heart and soul of reselling. And that is staying vigilant, that is staying flexible, and forever following the changes. Rolling with the tide, guys. Because if we are staying stiff and firm, we're narrow-minded, looking straight into the, watching the paint dry and not moving our eyes anywhere, you're gonna be left behind. And I hear the arguments. Um, you know, I saw some of your guys' comments. For the most part, people are positive and just want to have a general conversation about what they're experiencing as well. But there are some comments that leave you second-guessing. 
and the, like the mentality of people. And you have to remind yourself to not get wrapped up into their frustrations, their mentality. Because at the end of the day, if you go two years from now into the future, who's going to be left standing? Is it going to be the person that was so frustrated that it clouded their judgment, it narrowed their vision, and forced them to not be vigilant in their business? Or is it going to be the person that saw things coming, rolled with the punches, and at the end of the day, took complete ownership of their business and made it work? So, there you have it, guys. Please, remind yourselves. That's the important thing. Reselling is inherently a lonely activity. And sometimes we just need a little pick-me-up. And what better time than now, guys? It's, uh, let's keep chugging on. Let's keep having great conversations. Let's find solutions that are meaningful and work. If you got anything from this, or you just like this content, like, subscribe, share my videos, and until the next video, guys, rule the day.